We all met up in Jackson, Wyoming, and then drove to the south entrance of Yellowstone, where we took the snow coach to Old Faithful Lodge, stopping at Lewis Falls and the West Thumb Geyser Basin along the way. Yeah. <laughs> Our driver is Jay in number 719 here. Flag Ranch, south entrance. We're loading up. Loading up the cargo snow coach. We made a brief stop at the park entrance for the obligatory touristy things. A lot of happy, smiling faces with the expectations ahead. Uh, Snake River here at the entrance to the park. Our snow coach driver, Jay. Oh no. <laughs> we stopped for a scenic picture break at the Lewis River Canyon Overlook with a quite dramatic view of the aftermath of the 1988 wildfires just a year after our last visit here as a group. Yellowstone was overdue for a large fire and in the exceptionally dry summer, the many smaller controlled fires combined due to high winds and years of poor fire management, where fires were quickly suppressed rather than letting Mother Nature do her thing, thus periodically clearing out the accumulated underbrush. Approaching Lewis Falls for another scenic stop. Our next stop was at the Lewis River, a major tributary of the Snake River. Lewis Falls lies right on the edge of the old megavolcano caldera rim. Just as one would suspect, the lake, river, and falls are all named after Meriwether Lewis. The Lewis River flows out of Lewis Lake, joining the Snake River just at the park entrance. We stopped at Yellowstone Lake's West Thumb Geyser Basin for almost an hour for a nice stroll along the boardwalk in amongst the geothermal features. This is a nice example of a steam fumarole or vent. Abyss Pool has an amazing color to it. The closer to white the water, the hotter the temp. So this blue is quite warm. No, hot. <laughs> <laughs> hot, but not that hot. Cool. With boiling pools of water, mud pots, fumaroles, and geysers, over half of the world's geothermal features and two-thirds of the geysers are within this park. The west thumb of Yellowstone Lake is the result of a caldera within oh. an older, larger caldera. And now it's off to Old Faithful Lodge. On Tuesday morning, we grabbed our skis and headed off towards Old Faithful and a loop around the main geyser basin surrounding the Firehole River. Truly outstanding, isn't it? <laughs> what a cute little geyser. This one's only going up like six, eight, ten feet sometimes, but continually. The brown coloring is from algae growing in the cooler fringes of the pool. Too bad we didn't see this one erupt. It's a big one, over 200 feet tall.
We had a close encounter with a bison 28 years ago, too. According to Wikipedia, a bison's body language says that when its tail gets raised straight up, it's a warning and about ready to charge. Right after this, he raised his tail and I chose to loop around the long way. Pretty massive head on those things, huh? Yeah. This is Morning Glory Pool, and a prime example of what man's pollution can do. Tossing in pennies and such has changed the color quite dramatically for the worse. It used to be glorious, still glory. George is checking out the shadow head halo. So why do you get a head halo? Me? Because I'm so saintly. Well, but too. you are the universal, I don't know. Wolf tracks. And I'm not kidding. The, the, spot the, wolf, the wolf tracks. So, well, you went from Some like of them actually saw the wolf. Actually bigger than the ski pole baskets. Yeah, I suppose somebody could be going around with a custom made ski basket making those tracks too, huh? <laughs> Big difference between the little coyote tracks and the wolf tracks. Less is, less is a little pup. <laughs> At a distance, without something to judge size, it's difficult to tell a coyote from a wolf. But one indication is that a coyote often has its tail hanging between its rear legs. You decide on this one. We're heading northwest towards the Pitchstone Plateau, paralleling the Firehole River. <laughs> oh, that's quite a cone there. Mm -hmm. The ski shop back at Old Faithful Lodge ended up putting this trail up on the board as the MIT Trail. How cool is that? Approaching the Firehole River, <laughs> quite appropriately named with all the thermal activity jumping into it. All the young lodgepole are coming up from the big burn of the mature lodgepole. It's happening quick. Thirteen of us total, one spousal partner, a fellow MIT ex-student, and all but honorary SIG, and two quote-unquote youngsters. We stopped for lunch across the river from Grand Geyser. We did not see it erupt but it certainly must have a pretty good sized flow judging by the amount of ice built up above the river bank. George also got No, somebody that calls this badly potholed hasn't skied in Yosemite. <laughs> they wouldn't call this badly potholed. But even that other thing that we saw and stuff, and the, you know, I haven't seen anything that's horrible. Tim had a complete boot sole delamination out there in the field, and with skiing, that's not good. It definitely looks nice. How's the repair work? So far, so good. Good. Yeah, I'm looking at it to see. I mean, I think you start to see the tape tear and. If it starts to give, then that's okay so far. It did a lot, it seems. 
full on sun out in the open meadow. Got it on video, Paul. I just happened to turn it on just seconds before you went down. <laughs> well, that's that's exactly what I thought. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look who's in front of me. <laughs> that was a valid sacrifice there for the home video audience. They'll, it's like figure eight demolition derbies. We all love carnage. That would be Castle Geyser from across the Firehole River, yep. looking at it from the opposite direction from this morning. You go for a, a week or you go for three days. Yeah. After the ski, we took a walk around the boardwalk to see even more thermal features. I tell a swift one that one, yeah. wasn't it? Okay. She wasn't so good. No. Yeah, I mean, it's a funny gimmick and I can't help but laugh. At Hot and clear in the center, and brownish green and cooler near the outer border. A distant one that's going off now, we might have skied by that this morning. Castle, Geyser possibly. It's certainly in the right place, but it's going. Old Faithful starting to chortle and chuggle and snort a little bit. Pretty near the end of the 90 plus or minus 10 minutes, being plus 10 minutes. So we're expecting it. Or she blows. This coyote's enjoying the view of Old Faithful as well. Boy, that's shooting some water a long way out. Wednesday morning we skied up the road to the Lone Star Geyser and the Spring Creek Trail which we had such fond memories of 28 years ago. This is the Firehole River just upstream of Kepler Cascades near where the trail leaves the road. I say it looks more blustery than it really is. I guess we won't have to wonder if we'll get to see Lone Star erupt or not. It only goes off every three hours or so, and we really didn't know if we'd have time to hang around or not. Lone Star typically lasts 20 to 30 minutes when it does erupt. Now we'll just have to watch to see how much we might have missed. The trail's almost as skinny as the skis in places. Most of the stories concerning the naming of Lone Star refer to the isolation from other geothermal features in the park. Amazing timing, huh? It took 30 minutes, so. Well, that's been going probably close to 15 already, huh? Did you? Well, it goes 30 feet. It's been doing well, I heard 30 minutes in print, but you yeah. know who things change. 
It could, I mean. This says that the 10 to 15 calms down to a noisy steam curve. Looks a lot like a lunch spot happening. Just figure you're burning more calories. Yep. As it turns out, we watched and let the spray drift on us for a good 30 minutes, so we must not have missed hardly anything. All right, all right. Vamanos? Yeah. And now off to Spring Creek, which we passed a short while back. Now we retrace our path less than a mile back to the Spring Creek turnoff. Hi there, Mike. How you doing? Wave hi to the camera. Well, typical skier, how is it out oh, there today? It's a great day. During the summer season, this is a service road that is open to both hikers and bikers. Yeehaw. Nice. Way to go, Paul. Hey, not bad for that first time on skis. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Seriously. That's what... That's what 30 years ago. Yeah, right. Yeah, he makes up for some lack of technique with for force. So. Kind of like we used to do. Yeah. Now we use our wily veteran skills. This would be the Firehole River, which Spring Creek flows into. Who knew it would get so good right away, yeah. Now it's three plus miles up the creek to the road. Now that I'm out here on the trail a little bit, I'm still trying to do it by brute force, only I don't have any. <laughs> no technique, no brute force either, huh? But what about those wily veteran skills that Ken mentioned? What a beautiful, gorgeous day we've got today. Pun intended. Compared to 28 years ago, the current trail conditions are keeping us on our toes, that's for sure. And on our skis for the most part.
Looks like another spot demanding those wily veteran skills. Either that or it's Splish Splash. Right. That was a good save, Derek. Yeah, that would have been a bad fall. That would have been unfortunate. Can't think of a better time to utilize those wily veteran skills. Good, we, if we were good, we'd shovel it in yeah, and uh, yeah, we get it off, right? Oh, if we're going to do it tomorrow, it'd be worth it. Or if we're going to come back down, yeah. Yeah, if coming back down, you'd be careful to go for that. Yeah, I don't like that. And it'd be a mistake. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't do that. Huh? Well, I mean, you, know, you guys all don't move for that. I mean, you don't see it walking here, you could easily just yeah, bomb right. through it and not see it coming. It's so funny, Rick remembered this really well, and I haven't the foggiest recollection of coming down this 28 years ago. Yeah, because the ending, the run out's not that good. Snow's pretty good though. Leaky cold snow. We are on a little island. <laughs> oh my. I don't think this is a man-made bridge maybe. Because yeah, maybe the uh -huh. trail goes that way normally. And yeah, somebody took advantage of the snow island. Yeah, That's good. cool. Certainly plausible as well.
When we reached the road at the top of the Spring Creek Trail, John and I turned around and retraced our steps, whilst the others continued down the road back to the cabins. And the Firehole River, of course. Almost back to the cabins and happy hour. Of course, it's been happy hour all day long here, I guess. On Friday morning, we boarded the snow coach for the ride back to Flag Ranch at the south entrance, stopping off at Kepler Cascades and West Thumb Geyser Basin. Our last stop on the way to Flag Ranch was Yellowstone Lake's West Thumb Geyser Basin. Very fitting as it was almost the first stop on the way in to Old Faithful. The continuous presence of steam and cold temperatures sure makes for some pretty stuff. And some of the coloring of the thermal features is amazing. And now it's off on our final leg to South Entrance and Flag Ranch. And finally Jackson Hole. And then it's off to various destinations for our group. What a trip. Wow. Thanks, folks. Many, many huge grateful thanks to all those contributing pictures to this. Thank you.